Hello everyone, I'm joined by Andy at Wally Model Railway Club. How are you doing Andy? Thanks for inviting me Michael. Yeah, you've come all the way down from Birmingham to I see have. us in Margate at Hornby HQ. Yeah, it's, it's so good to be here because last time we did a video, it was all via Zoom. Yeah. Uh, but it's so nice to be back, actually being out to meeting people and interacting, which is yeah, yeah. so much better than just being on a TV screen, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, when you were telling me it's been a while since you've actually been down here, you said 2017, you think? I, I think it was about been... 2017, 2018. I come down with David from Dean Park Station yeah. uh, and we filmed an interview with Simon, uh, okay, yeah. which was fantastic. He showed us around the one-to-one -one collection. Uh, yeah. Got to have a a plan the foot plate, oh, uh, well, yeah, yeah. unofficially, uh, but it was really good to come down here and it, it's so nice to be back here again, yeah. uh, especially at night having shows because uh, I think the last time I spent time and had a chat with Simon and Montana was Glasgow, which would have been, is that 2019 I think just it was, before, yeah, just before everything sort of, turned it, off for yeah everything stopped. sort of just stopped, so yeah, yeah. Uh, you know we had a fantastic weekend with them. Uh, 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 chat and you know, I uh, went for a drink with Simon uh, on the Saturday nights. But it's, it's so nice to be back down here and and be able to you know talk to people again. Yeah, yeah. Which and is good. obviously you're you're here, part of Mind the uh, Gap, which is the first time we've done something like this, and we're um, supporting uh, Mind and raising awareness about mental health and things like that. And and obviously hobbies and in general, and for you, model railways, I suppose, have been. Um, you know, something that, that maybe has helped you with a few things about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's getting out and being in a club. Uh, and again, during lockdown, we've had sort of online uh, Zoom meetings yeah. with the members, different groups. Uh, but it's so nice to get back into the club room again and, and, and interact and talk to people. Uh, I always thought myself as a bit of a loner. Uh, and I was quite happy being that sort of... of uh, Tom Hanks castaway character. Yeah, yeah. I'll be on an island yeah, all on my yeah. own, but we actually not. We we need to be with people and we yeah. need to interact. Uh, so it's it's sort of a it's been a strange couple, you know, twelve eighteen months. But it's just nice now to get back to some sort of normality and yeah, yeah. and and interact with people and talk to people. Yeah, exactly. And so you've come down today, and we're we're sort of setting you a little bit of a challenge today. Um, last time I came on uh, your Wednesday live show, you know, you showed me some some techniques um, which I absolutely didn't know anything about. So um, I really enjoyed that. So we wanted to get you on here, and you uh, suggested a little idea for us, which is we've got a baseboard here, so um, a, a very small baseboard. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this first before I tell everyone what's yeah, really happening? Yeah, this is a uh, kindly uh, donated by Martin at WWS. Uh, so Martin does a lot. Of Static grasses, applicators, and he kindly give us this sort of day, uh, this baseboard to play with. Uh, so all I've done so far is just get a photograph, photograph back scene, which I've printed on a, a laser printer, and glued to the back. Yeah. Uh, but it's a really nice sort of design where it's all sort of MDF. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, uh, we're just going to throw something together. I haven't got a clue what I'm going to get. Yeah. So you are going to get. Uh, Whatever comes out of this box is going to be like, it's, it's whatever. Uh, yeah, exactly. So we're going to be giving Andy a, a box of various different things um, and we just can see what Andy come up with and as, as you go through, you're going to show me some techniques and, and, and I'll get involved and hopefully not mess it up too much. But um, let's shift this lovely yep. little waste board out of the way. I'll go that over to your side and then we can get out our box of goodies. So it's quite a large box, and <laughs> first we look at the baseball. I think there's probably going to be quite a lot in here that that you may or may not use. Yeah. So here we go. Right. You know, if you want to do the sort of honours, you can have a little look a look through. So I've got some lots and lots of scenic stuff. Oh, here. brilliant! So we've got some. Uh, looks like coal. Yeah. Ballast. Some grass. Some scatters. More ballast. Yeah. Our different colours, brilliant. Different. Ah, some flocks, excellent. Uh, more flock, got some lynching. Yeah. Now, because I didn't know sort of what you did, I, I, I've, I've never used these before, so maybe you can explore, explain what uh, the difference between. Yeah. Uh, to, 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 to these, what what. Is well, there much difference in, in these ones? I'm not a clue, but I'm sure we can. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure we can work something out between <laughs> us. Uh, 
I have some trees. Obviously, yeah. So, some more scatter material. I might pimp these up a bit more if that's okay for yeah. you. Uh, I've done this. More balance. So I'm going through the, uh, the, the scale scenes and stuff um, first. Add some bullets to that, but more trees. More trees, but these ones are, you know, a bit more detailed. Add bullets. Um, right. So again, again Andy's not going to use all of this, but the, otherwise it would just be a, probably a pile of yeah, just of, be of, of <laughs> scenic stuff. So we've got an accessory pack there. Add bullets. Well. Um, and then a whole host of traps. Obviously, you track Absolutely. Out, on the, the sizes again. Yeah. Um, power if you, if, you, if you want to have. No, I don't think we're going to. I won't have power, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, some points. Yeah. Pullers. Um, again, you said you won't have power, but there is. Power supply. Yeah. But, but maybe we can get something, maybe get something running just for the. Uh, bit bit off the wall, some, some toothpicks in case there's anything you. Okay. Them for. I don't know what, but we can. <laughs> if you've got some cotton, we could might be able to make a fence. Oh, uh, some buff stock. Oh, balloons. Okay. Another point. Another point. And then we've got some rolling stock. We could do some weathering with the uh, yeah with the airbrush. So yeah. do a bit of a weathering lesson if you want. So if you have a an abandoned uh, abandoned siding, maybe with nice. some wagons yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like and then our. Uh, Favourite Smokey Joe, which is I always love, so he's in there as well. Again, we could do some do some webbing on the on the loco as well if you want yeah. to. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, there's plenty in there for you. At first glance, what are you thinking? Uh, I think we need I think we these need to be pimped up a bit, uh, yeah. so we could build the the buildings. Uh, uh, really get I could do something with the the girders, so instead of having, so we could paint them, do some pre-shading, post-shading with the airbrush to paint the, the girder work on that to give it a bit more of an aged look. Yep. Uh, I think we just, shall we get, if you get, we have a clear up now, yep. we get the buildings out, yep. we get some track on the board, we'll start to plan yep. what we're going to do Brilliant. and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, Sounds so great. So track first, yeah? Yeah, so We'll have a clear up and come back to you in a few minutes. Perfect. Right, so we're back and Andy's had a, a little look through some of what we've given him and you've put together a, an idea of what we're going to do. So do you want to tell the people at home what we're actually going to be? Yeah, you've been really kind to me. You've been, <laughs> uh, I wasn't sure what was going to come out of the box today. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think if you have a, something like that with a bit of a set of points, with a bit of a, like a bit of a branch line, yeah. uh, Bit of a siding going on, yeah. uh, so what we do, we'll get the cork down, uh, we'll get the cork glued down with copied X, we'll get the track glued down on top, uh, maybe try and fill the holes, yeah. uh, and then what we'll do then is once everything's glued, uh, we'll get some track grime on, paint the track. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the buildings, I think this little water tower would be, look good. Uh, yeah. So, thinking is we could have any set. Push that down. So get that fixed there. We can have a little Smoky Joe uh, getting some water. Nice. Uh, so maybe add some water effects to the loco. Get it weathered. Mm -hmm. uh, give it a, a a nice look. Got this sort of workman's hut there, line side hut. So we could have that there. Uh, this bag of ballast. And yep. we've got the coal wagon uh, and a brake van. So we. I'm, Sure, we could put that onto the uh, onto the branch line. Get some coal in there. We'll get the wagon, the wagon weathered. Uh, and we've got some telegraph poles we can put along the front just to give it a bit of interest. Yeah. Maybe do some sort of uh, some sort of hill here. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, okay. Just to so it's not a completely flat. Uh, so we can have a bit of wasteland. We can have some trees on there. Yeah. Uh, we've got obviously a buffer stop as well. Brilliant. So, okay. just gives you a bit of interest, and it's yeah. not just completely all flat. Um, yeah, yeah. So, I hate doing stickers. So, okay. So, you want me to do that? Can you can you do the stickers yeah, for me? Stickers uh, for and then what? I think you... I think to start with, we'll get this. We'll get the track glued down. Yeah. Uh, we'll get the track laid. 
uh, um, get the, the track painted, yeah. uh, and that will make such a big difference to get the paint on. Uh, and we can leave that to dry then while I do the, do the painting on these. So I've got yeah. an airbrush with me. I may even do the wagons at the same time. Yeah. Uh, but at least gives that chance to uh, to dry off a bit. Well, it's good because it, it is quite simple. It, it isn't too difficult a uh, thing for anyone at home if they see it and they want to kind of try the same sort of style as it is. Yeah. It's very minimal. So. Um, the, the the thing for me with modelling sometimes is less is more. Yeah. yeah. You, you know you can get a baseboard and you can absolutely fill it with detail uh, or try and put tram lots and lots of things in. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's better to have slightly less models and modelling but have that bit more detail. Yeah. Uh, and it, when, I, when I look at a layout, and uh, it's nice to look at a layout and see, and have a quick look around, but it's when you go back the second time and have another look and you go, oh, I didn't spot that there. Well, yeah. there's something, you know, the little things that you don't see straight away. And it, that sort of, uh, you know, draws your attention. Uh, and little cameo scenes, so, uh, you know, try and make something, something of interest, hopefully. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to be stickering. You're going to be you're stickering, going to so that. okay, that, that's yeah. going to keep okay. you out of mischief Brilliant. for a bit. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Right. So, let's, uh, let's, let's get cranky. But again, you know, these, 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 I know it's a starter set, which we've got, but when you look at them, there's some really nice details on these, uh, on these buildings. So, yeah. you have got, you know, the basics of a really good, uh, yeah, I mean, the sign on the side there. Yeah, it's all sort of, I know it's mildly detail, but there's, there's a lot you can do with it. And hopefully when we do the, get that with the airbrush, we can get, make the, the, those sort of pop out. Uh, Brilliant. Right. Okay, so I'm just, I need more stickers though. <laughs> you need more you stickers? Oh, because you can choose the, uh, the brickwork, can't you? That's it, yeah. Which one would you choose? Uh, I don't mind, I'll let you choose. You're the, uh, the uh, larger brickwork. Uh, so, how long would you say you've been sort of model way away? Uh, my first. Uh, train set was a Hornby train set when I was uh, three. Right. Two, uh, but at that age, it's not my train set; it's my dad's train set, yeah. and I would have to sort of sit on his little stool. Uh, I'm sure I've got, a, I've got a picture of me on, on my phone somewhere. You can have if you want to. If I want to really embarrass myself, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was uh, one Christmas we had a, a Hornby. Uh, GWR mixed freight set, so it was uh, a. No, no, but I'd a Smoky Joe. Uh, it was really? a little one, Hornby 101 oh, okay. GWR. Yeah, yeah. So I had one of those with a McVitie's biscuit van, a couple <laughs> of uh, couple of uh, small wagons, uh, and a fuel tanker. Uh, oh, and we had a, a little Class 25, and I absolutely loved that. I loved it as a kid. Uh, and we had a like a like a five foot by four foot board yeah. in the uh in the living room which uh you know cause me, me dad wouldn't let anyone go anywhere anywhere near it really you know i had to sit on this stool and i couldn't touch it i couldn't go in you know like i said i think he bought it for himself not for me uh, <laughs> and then i think when i was four we had a my dad, the next christmas we had the hst so it was the year he bought the hst out yeah uh, oh no, I just really loved it. Yeah. Uh, and I haven't, I haven't, you know, I've, I've looked, HSDs have always been my favourite since. But then I guess at some point you go from kind of just that childlike innocence of, of loving tra uh, trains and locos and things like that to levelling up to, <laughs> to, 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 to where you're at now. So at what point did you kind of think, no, no, I want to get a little bit serious, I suppose? Uh, I suppose you know. I think it was the YouTube generation sort of uh, sort of kicked in. Uh, yeah. I moved into my. I bought my own house. Uh, so you had the space. So I had, I had the space, yeah, yeah. and it wasn't sort of you know. You, we all go through different stages. You know, different stages in life where you sort of, like I said, you you, you go to pubs and yeah. you sort of leave the uh, 
the model our way behind. Yeah. Uh, but then it's it's sort of uh, I started watching videos on YouTube and I'm th I was thinking oh, I'd like to have a go at doing that. I think I could do that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you sort of just come back. You come back into the hobby and you think. You know, the, the good thing with YouTube, there's so many uh, tutorials out there now, and there's some really good modelers. Uh, uh, so it's good to sort of uh, have a go. And then I joined Wally Model Railway Club. Uh, so I used to, uh, that would have been about eight years ago now. Uh, so I sort of, I got sort of uh, shoehorned on to uh, helping the club on the, uh, on the committee, uh, nice. so members representative, and then uh, and then a sec club secretary, an exhibition secretary, uh, and and now they're trying to line me up to sort of take over the exhibition as exhibition manager oh, wow. uh, when Nigel sort of uh, decides he's had enough. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's uh, it's challenging because yeah. uh, it. I don't want to sound. But it, 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 it's, a bit, it's a group of our men who are, who are sort of stuck in a time warp at times. Okay, yeah. So it's trying to bring new ideas and, yeah. you, know, so, you know, the social media side is, uh, you know, it's trying to bring and bring younger people into the hobby, really. And Yeah, I think that's, you know, having been in our, uh, just over four years, you can certainly see that there's a shift of... of like you say, the YouTube kind of generation and and that that I suppose any traditional hobby or anything like that kind of has to say go with the times a little bit. Um, keep that tradition of things, but you know, it's as, well, as with anything, things evolve. You, a company like Hornby doesn't stick around for a hundred years if they don't adapt to absolutely to, uh, new yeah. ideas and new yeah. things while still keeping what what people love about. In doing model railways, um, I think especially in the last twelve to eighteen months during the pandemic, it's certainly been um, prevalent that, that hobbies and pastimes, you know, crafting, sports, games, model railways, board games, like all these sorts of hobbies have been really beneficial. Absolutely. To people. And now all of a sudden, we realised, oh, you know. There's a world outside of our computer screen, little computer screen, or our our, our smartphone things, and um, yeah, I think that's it's quite interesting. I mean, even f for me personally, you know, going for walks and things like that was never something that I suppose felt quite as yeah, it's quite special in a way because you know you could do it whenever you wanted, and then all of a sudden well, you're not allowed to, and the only thing you can do is go out and exercise or walk or something like that. Seeing nature and things was quite refreshing, um, and I mean even for me, I didn't. I did my first little layout scenic diorama um, during the lockdown, so you know I think there's probably lots of people there that have taken up hobbies uh, yeah. at home. That they'd never even thought about before because we all had so much time to fill. I think it's also for me. It's uh, it's brought your uh, it's brought your local area uh, home to you almost. Mm. It's, you know, it's you know whenever we go thinking of doing something or going anywhere, it's always oh we'll go somewhere that's forty mile away, fifty mile. Away. All of a sudden, you're now sort of looking at your local area where you live and going, hold on, it's. You know, there's places I've been to or can go to that I didn't know were there. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's you know in a way it's been it, in a way there's positive to take from uh, what's happened. Yeah. And uh, you know I can imagine a lot of people spending more time you know especially got family at home and spending more time and, and seeing your kids go up and yeah. having that time to spend with your family and uh, which is which is all good really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, no, no, I miss stickers. They've got windows. I need to cut them, mate. Have you got something I could use? Uh, to... I've got a blade. Uh, yeah. I've got, a little, got a little um, cutting board behind you. Already. There you are. Um, okay. Steal this from you. So, all I've done is I've a copy decks the. Uh, the cork in place, yep. general shape, 
and I'm going to hopefully that's going to sort of sit on there. So where you've used, um, I assume something that's more quick drying is that? Am I right there? Or is yeah, Copidex dries fairly quick. It's a yeah. latex glue, so it's. Right. Uh, but you can just use. You could use PVA, but this would dry a lot quicker than PVA. Yeah. Uh, so all I want to really do now is sort of is to let this sort of go off. Uh, once it dries, we can then cut the track there, cut the track there, then the buffer will go on about there. Okay. Uh, and then we'll just give, we'll, we'll my pass snip outside and then we'll just give it a quick blast with uh, the airbrush, cause, uh, not the airbrush, the, uh, the paint, because I've got a spray. Uh, and we just coat the whole thing. Uh, okay. All right. Well, I'll, um, I'll carry on with this, and we'll let that dry, and then we'll come back after that. Brilliant. Okay. So we've got some rudimentary weight put down on the uh, the track there, so that we can try and make that dry quicker. And Andy, what are we going to be doing now? Well, what are you going to be doing? In, in the meantime, <laughs> you've been busy with the yeah. uh, fixing all the stickers on, so that's looking good. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give this a bit of a pimp it up really. Uh, so I've got my airbrush. Yep. So basics are air comes through there. Uh, there's your, your control for the air. So when you push down, you get air come out. Yeah. Uh, when you pull back uh, the paint, it pulls the needle back, which allows the paint to flow. So for the, from the color cup along the needle and out of the front. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to use acrylic paint. So if you're using enamels, face mask, ventilation, acrylic paints. Again, you, ideally you want to put a face mask on for it, but because of the, we've got plenty of ventilation, we've got windows open, yep. uh, it'll be fine. Uh, and if you wear a mask, you're going to struggle to hear what I'm saying on camera anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. What, to, to, like I said, we're just using normal acrylic paints. I'm going to do this, give this a quick primer coat first, so get a layer of grey paint on. Let that dry, I'm going to, Primer coat on the on the buildings. I've got these little reverse uh, reverse tweezers. So basically, where normal tweezers you squeeze it tight yep. to hold something. This you really you squeeze it to release. So right. so it's good for holding items. Uh, oh, okay. So you can get sort of the chimney there. You can oh, hold yeah. that, and then you can you can paint away and. That's good. Same as getting fingers all yeah, over the paint, yeah, and then again you can sort of yeah. Yeah, stand really it up. So I get I come if you come back in a few moments, I'll get the paint loaded up, and then we'll uh, yeah we'll do some painting. Yeah. So just some thinners. Bush, just to give it a, a bit of a stir and all we do now is so we get paint everywhere uh, so just check the flow of the paint first that's coming out nicely and all we're going to do then is try and hold the top nice thin coats of uh, Yeah, but the good thing is that it's near enough to dry, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and that's only just gone over that. No uh, final Yeah, but it's nice and smooth, nice and it's no, there's no sort of uh, bush strokes in there. It's, it makes painting very easy. Yeah, yeah. So I just give it a light coat, go around the other three sides, then come back, and uh, we will give it another coat, mm. and then. It's just the basics, and uh, it's when I started in the next colours. That's when the magic starts to uh, to happen, because we're not just going to paint it one colour. The problem if you do one colour, uh, items look they look plasticky then, because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a solid colour. By adding tones, and uh, you can make the panels stand out. Mm. Uh, we could even add a bit of rust or something if you want to add a bit of rust. Does it take a little bit to kind of master it, or is it quite? Uh, 
it's one of these things you just need to have a go at. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and if we've got time later on, we'll get I'll get you on. We'll get you having a go as well, yeah, so you yeah. can have a a play. Uh, but I always thought I don't want an airbrush. It's too much hassle. It's, you've got to clean it. You've got to mm. look after it. And uh, but as soon as you do it, you think and you see the, the effects, what you can get from it, yeah. it, it, you know, it sort of opens your eyes to what you can do model-wise. And it's also quite economical with paint as well. Uh, you know, I don't know if, if you saw how much, but I didn't put, use a lot yeah, of paint. Yeah, uh, a tiny bit of paint, yeah. and all of a sudden, you've got quite a big uh, coverage area. And all I'm doing is really doing a primer coat. So it's something, I can let this dry, and then when I do the rest of the details, uh, the paint has got something to grip to and stick yeah. to. There you go. Yeah, how long that took yeah. me? 30 seconds, got a nice coat of paint on it. Uh, yeah, it's really good. Wow. You do your house in that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, fun door. Easier than that, yeah, guys. Okay. Absolutely, the yeah. roller. But no, it's uh, it, it's a nice, you know, it gives it a nice effect. In space, red of the hatch there. Yeah, and then, like I said, just case and leave that now. How long does it usually? Uh, roughly. 15, 20 minutes. Then, oh, wow. then we'll go back with because it's only really thin coats. They're drying. The paint's almost drying as soon as you uh, as soon as you. You know, as soon as you come away, and if you want to, just go, just blow air on it. Uh, okay. So instead of using the paint, I'm just blowing the air from the compressor onto the plastic, and that will help dry it back. Okay. Again, if if you make a mistake and you flood, you know, you go, that's you know, I flooded that with paint. Again, if you just go back with the air, you can you can dry it back, and uh, yeah. So even if you make mistakes, there's ways to uh, ways to correct you. Yeah. So I'm going to carry on priming the bits I've got, yeah. uh, and we'll come back when we do the next when we start doing the next layers. Because yeah, yeah. I don't think the people will want to watch me <laughs> brushing yeah. everything. Okay. We prime the coat. Right, uh, right, it yeah, gets we'll... a bit boring, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll come back after you've uh, you've done your primer coat. Cool. Do you want to have a go? Yeah. Yeah. What's the Best thing to do is get a piece of paper to start with, yeah. and just just get the feel for it to start with, yeah. and just just get the feel for it. So if you, uh, you come come down, push down with your finger first for the air, and then oh, yeah. then slowly draw the paint brush back, the air brush back, the trigger back slowly. There you go, oh, yeah. and then so the more you come back from the item, the bigger the the oh, paint yeah. area. Uh, the closer you get in, the smaller. Right, yeah, yeah. And you can, you know, reduce the amount of paint coming off. So pull the, release the trigger slowly. There you go. And then what you can do then is what you name. Please spell your name quickly, because yeah. I'll be... <laughs> it's fun, that, though. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's really good. But the thing is, though, you can... Uh, from there, you can start... Like I said, when you do the next techniques, you'll see what I mean about... You can uh, you can feather painting, so you can feather colours. Yeah. So you can go... So if you're doing, like... You know, if... If I've got... I haven't got any red paint with me, but if you had red, I could, you could go in around the lettering and... Oh, okay, and yeah, make yeah. like a like a pink, mm. so you could start to fade the, the colours back, yeah. and you get like a really nice, uh, really nice effect. Stick. Okay, so Michael, let's let's see what you can do with an airbrush. So okay. you've watched me. So come back slightly further away from the, the plastic model, yeah. and then just slowly bring the paint in and, and keep the airbrush moving. Okay, yeah. Use the the, the lines on the. Uh, on the building as sort of a guide and then just and 
I to, well, once you practice, you should get used to aiming it then, and so just come down to the front. And then what I'll do then is turn it round, do another side now. It's really case of slowly building up the layers and Oh, don't worry about it, just the idea is at first is just to get a layer of paint down and so everything is uniformed in the same colour. Right. It's not the use of the pressure, like how much you're going back and But it'll come with, you know, it comes with practice and as you build, because we're doing thin coats and thin layers, you work on it and keep adding to it and uh, keep turning, rotating, keep moving. Uh, are you left-handed or right-handed? Right-handed. Are you right-handed, sir? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Why have I done it the wrong way? No, just because, right. uh, I suppose you just, you, you look a bit awkward at the moment with it because it's. Uh, That's not but, new. <laughs> but it, it, you know, it's, it's a new, it's a new thing. So it's uh, you sort of. Uh, it's practice. Just practice. Keep practicing. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the things. Once you once you get the hang of it, you you won't pick up a paintbrush again. Like I said, no, just in case, leave that to dry now and and we'll, uh, right yeah, just pop it on its, on its end like that. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's a good start. I'll, so, take, I'll take your word for that. Yeah, so, <laughs> so the main thing is, did you enjoy it? And, yeah, yeah, I think and, that, yeah, I think, you know, you can see the, d the difference. Yeah, and, and once you get used to, to, I suppose, how far you need to be and how much that's, pressure you're putting yeah. on things. Uh, um, you know, yeah, considering I've ch I chucked that at you, you know, ten seconds before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but all of a sudden, you do. Once you've done it a couple, of, you do that. Yeah, and yeah. The most important thing is to keep, keep, keep it moving. You know, I'm not on one spot. And, uh, Uh, once you've got your basics in, you just go back around again. Yeah. Next video, we'll have to do a Spitfire, won't we? Oh, yeah. Different. I'll paint it, but... You're not going to build it. Yeah, well, well, what's great is we have pounded it and such a good builder yeah. that nothing can I, I'll ever do will be uh, quite as... I think I, I think I need that because I like the painting part, but I can't stand the building. Really? Uh, I spend hours painting something, but I build it as quick as I possibly can because I don't know. I just don't like the building part. Really? I think I I probably would, you know, if I because I do enjoy building and I enjoy the you know scenics and things like that. I quite enjoy the building of these little things and stuff like that. Um, I think it's a bit like any hobby or anything like that, isn't it? You, you, you get a bit scared because you see how good people are at it. 
Yeah. And that kind of almost it can put you oh, off. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it because I'll never. I won't be at that level. But those people started the same way you're starting, not if knowing anything, and you just. We all started somewhere, didn't we? Yeah, it's, practice it's, makes perfect. And also, I suppose, the fundamentals about any hobby is that you're enjoying it and it's that's fun. It. Like you know, I, I, if I, you know, I've tried things like um, different fitness things and stuff like that, and. I'm not always great, and you know, I'm not the fastest runner, I'm not, you know, this, that, and the other. And, but you're actually just enjoying it, and, and, and that's ultimately what, what matters. And I think once you get that in your head that you can just enjoy a hobby for what it is, I think that's the main, yeah. main thing. Because, yeah, practice makes perfect. Absolutely. And yeah. you might be great at an area of it that someone else finds really difficult. Definitely. And, and that, that's. And again, that's another thing about being in the club. Yeah. Uh, we've got people in the club who are fantastic with DCC. We've got people who are electrical and they're using, you know, uh, servos for point motors. Yeah. And, and you've got the people who use the plug and play ones. Yeah. Uh, so it's been, a, again, playing part of a club. You've, get, you've got such a big uh, spectrum of skill base. So, yeah. you know... Uh, so I, I love I love my airbrushing and painting. So, you know, people come to me and say, "How do you how do you use your airbrush? How do you weather? How do you fade?" Mm, mm. Uh, and I and I I gladly share and help people. Yeah. But then there's times when I need help with, yeah. uh, you know, with electrics. I'm absolutely <laughs> awful. At, <laughs> you know, electrics. I'm I could, uh, you know, if, if you can blow something up, I'll I'll have a cloud of smoke coming out of it. Yeah, I guarantee, because yeah. uh, I'm just useless uh but it's again that's that's all part of the hobby really it's it's uh it's having to go and and trying to learn yeah, uh, yeah. so we're back but something's missing our track and our baseball what yeah you? basically what i've done is i've got some uh plastic filler yeah and i've just Again, being a bit OCD, uh, I just filled the holes where the trap pins would go in because yep. we've glued the trap down instead of pinning it. Yep. Uh, I've just gone around and filled the holes. Okay. Uh, and then I've just give it a quick razz with a rattle can of, uh, it's like a brownie, grey, sludgy, okay, dirty, yeah. S yeah. sleepery, grimy colour. <laughs> nice, uh, nice. Without saying what the name of the product is. <laughs> uh, so we just give it a quick razz. Uh, It'd be not, you know, if, if we're going to build a layout to run on, you'd be careful with the points yeah, yeah. Uh, and where the, the the contacts are for the points. Yeah. But because it's just going to be a static display, I've just just grimed it all up, yeah, so yeah, it looks nice. really dirty. It's going to look really dirty. Yeah. We did it outside because of the fumes, because yeah. it's uh, an enamel paint. So uh, we found a spot on the car park, but nowhere near no cars no and. Yeah, it's a bit blowy today as well, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's sort of trying to aim the paint at the uh, <laughs> in sort of the right direction. The wind just takes it towards the uh, the model. And in the meantime, so what we're going to need, I'm now going to work on this. So I've got some black paint this time. Yep. So we're going to go and just start to add some shadows. Cool. So this is where you have to be a bit more controlled, not just a case of chuck it on. So I'm going to try and go around the bottom edge. Of there, uh, and just go around all the individual panels. Like that. So yeah. just boxing everything in really. Just but really more where the grime and dirt would pick up. So if, you, if you're not, I can't try and talk and uh, focus at the same time, but if you're not, if you're not competent with airbrushing, yeah. uh, and you're not competent about weathering a product, post shading is a really good way to practice because it's controlling the airbrush, controlling the paint flow, but you can weather a product uh, before, without, and if it all goes completely wrong, you just go back to your primer coat and just start again. Right, yeah. But kind of what you're looking for is to sort of get some paint down. Uh, and you don't want it too uniform. You want it to look a bit sort of rough around the edges. Yeah, yeah, because so it's presumably it's, it's weathering and things like that. It's weathering and shadowing. 
So all we're doing is, like I said, we're just going around all the individual. And panels. Uh, and the clever bit is when I, the next coat is the clever one. Right. Uh, but I'll go around this now because this is going to take a while. Yep. And then we'll come back and do the yeah, next yeah, stage. Definitely. Okay, so we're back and you've done all your kind of shading with your with your black there on, on, on the panels, right? Yeah, just gone around the outside of the panels, just pretty well around it. Uh, just to give it a bit of uh, contrast in the colour. Yep. So what I'm going to do, that was sort of a tiny bit thinner, more paint. Yep. This time I'm going to go the opposite way around. I'm going to go a lot of thinners right. and very little paint. So okay. we want almost like a translucent okay. colour. So nice. it's, so I got me thinners in the uh, in the uh, in my airbrush colour cup. All I'm doing is picking up some paint on on a paintbrush. Yep. So you can see how little paint I'm mm. using, and I'm just going to stir that in. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see. So it's a really nice, fine, thin, thin paint mix, really. And we just give it a quick spray to test how it looks. But you can see from there, it's it's quite fine. And so um, what's this this kind of the doing? Plan, this is going to, what we're going to do, we're going to go quickly go over the whole thing. Right. But what, what mm. the magic happens, really, is when... It's going to be hard to show this on camera and to you at the same time. But what I'm going to do is now is just go... Oh, right, right across. Go right across the whole thing. Uh, but you put, let the paint go on. Uh, okay, yeah, as so it, it kind dries, of covers over the top covers of the, the whole, sh shadows. But yeah. as it dries back, the paint underneath starts to come back through again. Right. Uh, so we're sort of painting, but we're allowing the colours underneath yeah, yeah. to sort of come back. I'm going to show that to the camera. Uh, you can see that. And then you can build the paint really slowly, mm. but you're still getting that shadowing effect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we're going to go even add even more to this now in a moment. So you, get, you want to get your basic colour colour down. Yeah, because I guess that's what you don't really think about, is it? That it's... That it, it's it's not flat, so you don't have to sort of fill that bit in and you know colour in the lines, as it were. You, you're you're doing layers upon layers and things like that. Which, if anyone does any graphics or anything like that, home Photoshop and video and things like that, it's all layers upon layers. That, which I suppose is exactly the same thing you're really doing there, isn't it? You, what I'm trying to do is represent paint as it fades. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you paint a building, yeah, it's going to look pretty uniformed for yeah. the first six, six, 12 months, but yep. the sun will have different effects in different parts, different areas. So the bits out in the direct sun will fade quicker. Yep. Uh, uh, other bits where shadowed will, will maintain the color. Uh, and a really good example is if you go, if you look at pictures of the old, the, the railways in the eighties, seventies mm -hmm. and eighties where we are blue yeah. uh, period. Uh, for some, whatever, I don't know what paint they use, but be our blue faded very to like a grey colour. Right. <laughs> um, so even though this corporate blue image, the very you know you look at a loco sat there, you like the bits down the side would be nice, nice and blue. Apart from where the dirt sort of. Right. But you look at the roofs where they've been sat in the sun all day, and they go these sort of faded grey. Oh wow. Uh, so by doing this, you can again, weathering technique for model, you know, for your locos. If you do the pre-shading round the outside of the panels, then you can do your BR, you know, your blue shade over the top, and then you get that dirt coming up through yeah, the yeah. panels. Uh, and then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to add a tiny bit of grey paint to this right. once we finish the green, and that will just fade the green back. So we've got the grey, the greys mm. the gray of the the aged panels. Um, mm. But just go. But that is just to do do it but then allow it to sort of mm. dry back have a look at it if we need to add more paint we can add some more paint but it's easier to take it's easier, easier to add more paint see, than take oh, paint yeah, off because yeah, yeah. once you put too much off it's you've got to go back to the yeah. start and prime it and and go again uh, it, it sometimes it's that knowing when to stop and when mm. 
when you've done enough. Uh, That's starting to look a bit different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we've got a tiny bit of green paint left in. Yep. So I'm just going to get me 19, which is a, a light grey. And this time I want the paint to be a bit thicker, really. So I'm just going to a bit more green paint in. Anyone who's sort of... Uh, a proper model would be absolutely pulling the hair at me, you know, because I'm mixing, I'm mixing the colours in with the same brush in the same pot. Oh, okay. Which is uh, just, just we'll blur that out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can I can imagine people pulling the hair. I go, oh, what are you doing? But all I've done now is just, just blur the green through. But you can see now it's gone to more of a yeah yeah. A, 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 a grey green. Mm. Uh, I don't like using white paint to change colours no. because white generally changes the colour. Right. So if I'm doing greys, I use a grey to lighten it. If I'm using greens or blues, I use a grey. Right. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't change the actual colour itself. Yeah. It just sense. lightens the colour. Uh, and it's like when you use, if you want to do red, I wouldn't add white because it makes it pink. But mm. if you add orange or yellow, it sort of tones the red down yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's i suppose it's quite a it's it's practice but it's it, there's an art in in doing it uh, yeah yeah and it's, it's it just the need same that. as painting a canvas isn't absolutely it? you just got to uh you know experiment and play and practice mm. and so all understanding the paints you're using these absolutely eyes, you know. understanding colors and but all i'm doing now is i'm going to the center of the panels Just adding a tiny bit into the middle of the panel. It gives it a nice highlight. That's, that's in there, that's all it is really, it's highlighting. There you go. And that's just. Oh wow, yeah. Let that dry yeah. back. It's got a bit of a paint still, damp paint in the corners, but just by adding that tiny bit of a highlight in the middle, yeah. it makes the the dark, yeah. the dark outsides pop out more. Yeah. Uh, it's really nice contrast, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, I just do the other three sides. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll. Uh, you got to move on to. You the... can put. We we'll do the. We we'll do the roof panel. Yep. With the brown, uh, for the, uh, which we use for the uh, the buildings, and yep. then. Hopefully, we're we'll to get some ballast down on the track. Brilliant. So I think we on. I think we on schedule. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I mean, that's you say about being on schedule and things. I mean, time, you know, flies by. It already has the morning sort of gone. Um, and I guess talking about mental health and things like that, that's one of the things that having a hobby can do is, you know, you just get engrossed in something and you're going to not thinking about the stresses of what's going on around yeah. you and, and things like that. Um, much like meditation and that, you're just nice and focused. Yeah, um, you've got something to do, something to occupy your mind, something yeah. to think about. Uh, and you're not worried about, you know, other things. You've just got, yeah, yeah. you know, a clear mind. And So do you find that Model Railways helps you with your well-being and things like that? Uh, you know, it, it, for me, it's an escape from work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people come home from work and they still think about work. Mm. Uh, whereas I can go in my in my office and uh, I can just paint something or just just escape the world. Yeah. It's just like it's my own little space. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's always been you know it's something you know you can get frustrating sometimes. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, me and Anne Blesser used to say, you know, if I was modelling, I'd get. Especially a youngster, you get you you're really impatient, aren't you? Yeah. You, know, you get you get patience. I think comes with age. Yeah. Uh, and maturity, but we know we stay. If it's, if it's doing your reading, stop, put it down, and come back after you had a cup of tea. Yeah, yeah. And and that's some of the best advice. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's it's you know it's an hour later. Sometimes it's two two weeks yeah. later. Yeah, yeah. But you, you come back and and with a fresh mind, and you have another go and. 
but it's all about having, having fun, isn't it? And, yeah, exactly. And, and you know, it's uh, having a go. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, but yeah, yeah, I think that's. Yeah. I think that sort of worked. Uh, yeah, I think that looks really good. It just, it just. That's a difference. Uh, it's, you know, it, that that you know, piece of plastic doesn't look like a piece of plastic anymore. It's got no, that no. sort of. Uh, that sort of metal look to it almost. You think it was completely, it was like a brown colour, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, it had a bit of, uh, like a bit of weather into it, but I think, I think that yeah, makes. Yeah, yeah. That's really good. It makes such oh, a difference. Mm. Uh, but yeah. All right, so that one dries and. That is dry. To... We'll get the roof, we'll get the roof done next, I think. Yep. Uh, so we'll get some brown, but just the, the panel and we'll do these, these next. Brilliant. Uh, but yeah, looking right. good. Yeah, yeah.